If you've got income protection and you receive income from multiple sources or you have multiple policies, are you worried about how those income sources would affect your ability to claim? Given that this is my job, I have the time to read through the pages and pages of product disclosure statements, as well as call the insurers for anything that doesn't make sense in the things that I read. If you're not an absolute insurance nerd like me and you don't have time to do this, then stay tuned to make sure that you're not wasting money on premiums that you won't be able to claim on. Hi there, it's Craig Bigelow, founder and head insurance expert at True Pride. I bring out videos like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday around insurance, trying to make it easy for you to understand. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. This week, I met with a client who had a main job with one of the big four banks, and he also had a business on the side that he didn't have to put any effort into, but received an income on a regular basis. He asked me a question around what impact this would have on his income protection and his ability to claim if he needed to. Given the world that we live in today, more and more people are coming to me with multiple income streams. So it's not just the traditional one employer paying you one source of income. If you watch anything on YouTube, there's about 700,000 videos about side hustles. Gary Vaynerchuk's going on about it. Tim Ferriss's four-hour work week. All these sorts of things are out there and explaining the way to become more efficient and the way for us to earn money outside of our job, which is awesome. With more of us having multiple streams of income and getting creative with the way that we earn money, what impact does this have on our ability to claim from an income protection perspective if anything happens to us? To answer this question properly, we need to look at the different types of insurance policies that are available for income protection. The first of those is group insurance policies, which are the ones that you'll have if you have your income protection through an industry super fund or through some of your employer funded income protection policies. These group policies are really common because they're often a lot easier to apply for. They'll ask you less questions. They'll be uh, a lot more accepting of your application. So they'll be a lot easier for you to get the income protection through a group policy in place. With this ease of application though, there is some limitations with these policies. These limitations for the group policy policies are listed in their product disclosure statement, but for most people, taking the time to read through the hundred odd pages of legal jargon isn't something that you're likely to do. The good news is that I've done this reading and I've also called the insurance company and what I'm going to do is summarize this for you today to work out the key things that you'll need to know if you are receiving multiple sources of income. For the group policy, I've picked on Australian Super because they're the largest provider of superannuation in Australia and they offer a really good example of how this limitation of the second income could affect you if you need to claim. So point number four here references any income that in the opinion of the insurer you could reasonably be expected to earn in your occupation while disabled. I'm not sure about you, but that took me about 20 times to read to actually understand what the insurance company was saying here. Plus, I needed to call them to clarify further. After getting off the phone with their claims team, the way that it was explained to me was in the example that we've had today, that there's the main income and a second income, any claims for income protection would be reduced by the amount of secondary income for this client. Now, this isn't a go at Australian Super by any means. It's just one of the examples of these group policies. This is really consistent in the market for those group style policies. What this means in an example would be, let's say that you've paid for $10,000 a month worth of income protection benefits. You go to claim and they find that you're earning $2,000 a month from your secondary income. What the insurance company will do in this case is they'll reduce the $10,000 that they're meant to pay you by the amount of income that you're receiving from your secondary business and essentially pay you $8,000 a month for your claim. From an income perspective, this doesn't bother you because you've got the same amount of money coming into your bank account each month. But the issue is that you've actually been paying for the $10,000 a month for the whole time that you've had the policy. And that's where the problem I have with this is. Now, you're probably thinking that you just reduce the amount that you need based on any income that you have on the side. And that's a really good good way of thinking about it, but the issue would still remain. So what they'll do is they'll, no matter what your monthly benefit is, whether it be $10,000, $5,000, $8,000, they're going to reduce that amount by the amount of income that you receive on the side. So what could you do instead? The alternative to these group style income protection policies is having a retail or standalone income protection policy. Unlike these group policies, it's a little bit more complicated to get these policies in place up front. They're going to ask you a lot more questions about your current circumstance, and you're going to find it, it takes a little bit longer typically to get these policies in place. The good news is with these retail policies, the effort that you put in up front is rewarded to you at claim time. From my experience, when it comes down to scenarios like the one that this client presented this week that are a little bit grey and outside the box, retail policies are a lot easier to claim on. 
using the same scenario as before that the client was getting about $2,000 a month from his external business, I spoke to some of the retail providers today and this is what they said. Their advice was that if the client was to disclose this when they applied for the cover or it wasn't essentially in place when they applied for the cover, then any claims that they had in the future would not be affected by the income that they received through no personal exertion of themselves. What this means is that you'd get both the full amount of income protection that you've been paying for plus any income that you received from that side business that you had going at the same time. My belief as always is that you should have the minimum level of cover at all times. So in this scenario, if you're using a retail insurance provider and that income from your side business is really consistent, my recommendation would be to reduce the amount of monthly benefit that you're applying for with the retail provider. This would then reduce the amount of cost that you have ongoing with your insurance premiums and also make it more sustainable over the long term. Hey there, it's Biggs. Thanks for checking out the video. If you like these videos and you want to see more, we bring out a new video around the insurance topic every weekday. So hit that subscribe button next to me. Be notified when we release these videos. We love your support. We're here to build the community, community and we want to bring you more videos. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll chat to you soon.